Hello and welcome to this edition of the Making It Happen Show. The Making It Happen Show is a monthly news show that brings you the community information about the individual renovated schools along with opportunities for our Buffalo Public School students and opportunities for our minority and women business enterprises. The Making It Happen Show is produced by L.P. Simonelli and L.P. Simonelli is the program manager for the renovation program. Well right now I am standing in the courtyard of Frederick Law Olmsted School at Kensington and right behind me is the beautiful new addition. It's approximately 2,500 square foot addition. It looks like a big red cube. It's gorgeous. It's also known as the music room. Overall, this school has seen a tremendous amount of reconstruction. Close to $27 million worth of construction right here. But first I want to take you over to McKinley High School where I want to introduce you to Buffalo Public Schools Summer Management Interns. We have three wonderful interns that's working with us. They are Muji Rahman, Kennedy Colin, and Nate Voss. They are great, outstanding students. And then we're going to head over to the offices of Buffalo Prep. Now Buffalo Prep is a wonderful program for students in 7th and 8th grade and high school. And uh, this month they had a speaker series and they wanted to gear it towards construction. So Buffalo Prep reached out to L.P. Simonelli and asked if we could gather about five or six people that's in the construction business that would make up their panel. Um, so we're going to show you highlights from that speaker series, which I believe that the students really gained so much information. And a special thank you to all of the uh, minority and women business enterprises that took place in that event. And then we're going to head over to Buffalo Public School number 61 on Leroy Avenue, where Andrew Malcolm will take us on a tour. Now we were there back in January, so you will see a little bit of a transformation. They still have a long way to go, but my goodness, they are doing such a great job over there. And I just can't wait for you to see the updated school. And last but not least, we're going to come right back here to Frederick Law Olmsted School at Kensington, where Kensington High School classes of 1970 through 1979 celebrated their 40 plus year reunion and they kicked it off with a tour right here. What a great way to kick off your reunion weekend with a tour at the school that you shared so many fond memories with your classmates. And then what we're going to do is we're going to show you highlights from their banquet that took place on the very last night of their weekend. It was a great banquet. Everyone had a great time and I also had the honor of being honored with their vision award. So thank you very much Loretta Hicks and the entire Kensington High School reunion committee. Thank you very much. I am so glad you tuned in today because like I said this show is jam-packed. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Alright, hey guys, we are at McKinley High School and I'm standing here with a bunch of great students. These are our interns and you all know Mr. Vinny Jowdy himself, project manager of this just beautiful uh, state-of-the-art facility. And we're going to take a tour in a couple of minutes, but first I just want the interns, our Buffalo Public School interns, to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Kennedy. I'm Nate. Uh, I'm Moody. All right, okay, Kennedy, Nate, and Muji. Kennedy, what school are you from? Hutch Tech. Nate? International Prep. I'm Bogart. Well, I enjoy you guys being here, okay, and the people that you've been working with, they all have said wonderful things about each and every one of you. So congratulations on a job well done so far, okay, but we still got several more weeks to go, so more wonderful eye-opening events will happen, including today, because Vinny is going to show us yeah. some great things. Right, Vinny? Yes, it'll be fun. Yeah, what are we going to see today? We're going to go look at the library, which was reconstructed, and the uh, new addition. Guys, we're, uh, we're in the library, okay? Fully renovated. When I say that, we gutted the entire space. So this space was uh, two classrooms wow. and an old library. Now you can see we have borrowed light, which are these corner windows. Uh, we have a new skylight that was added for the structural work. Uh, we abated any hazards that were in here and gutted it and rebuilt it. And you can see it's a, it's a real cool space. What we did was, as soon as summer came, we cut, 
took all the wall down, dropped the ceiling, cut the floor, and then underneath this is a crawl space, so we had to build some foundation walls. And we built this new ramp here and made the staircase twice as wide. So now you have more travel space for students and teachers, so less congestion. Nice. Yeah. And then the other thing, visu visually, you see this whole hallway here is called Student Street. It's all the shops and, and you know, building trades. And you can look all the way through the library where the new windows were added. So it opens up, you know? Oh, yeah. It opens up the space. Very nice. Right. So very similar to like Albright Knox Art Gallery. Yeah. That's the whole purpose of these, okay? It's a, it's a bench. And it's all custom design and custom made. Very nice. Um, and this was actually all made uh, in Buffalo, and then our contractors installed it. So this represents Student Street, which is the um, uh, more shop areas of the building. So this gives them an opportunity to display mm -hmm. their work. And then they say, for instance, they're building something mechanical and it's big. You can set it down on this bench, and then you flip, you know, the hi-hats on and it lights it up so you can display the goods you know and during the school year this was used and you can see all the staples you know they did uh, I saw you know, like yearbook designs yeah. from the print shops mm -hmm. t-shirt designs mm -hmm. and so this is a this is a cool feature it is and right. is this really called student street it's called student street I love it yeah so we're in the fourth floor of the new edition looking uh, south so you can see uh, the um, what is it, bus state you can see downtown yeah, downtown <laughs> yeah it's, it's really cool it is cool really cool so you got any, any questions about the new addition or what you've seen so far how many classrooms have been taken out of the old school to make this okay so nate's wondering how many classrooms we had to take out of the existing building in order to tie on the new addition right so there's four floors, um, but on the first floor, it was more administrative space. So on floors two, three, and four, we eliminated about six rooms. They weren't all classrooms. Some were resource rooms or whatnot, so we just used the number six, so a couple on each floor, to make the connection for the links that uh, connect the uh, new addition to the existing building. Cool. I got one. Uh, how many square footage of the new addition? Okay, the new addition is about 39,000 square feet. Yeah, it adds uh, 20, about 20 classrooms, I believe. Wow. 20, 21 classrooms. our second in a series um, of speakers from our community who are coming to share with you um, information about their careers and how they got where they got and um, this is our group this is the Buffalo Prep class of 2012 today we have people from the construction industry I was always very interested in earth sciences, geography, so you know, it was a very natural progression for me to move into an environmental field. Um, I of course you know, pictured myself working out in Arizona as a forest ranger or something really cool and exciting and outdoorsy like that. Um, but as you may come to realize, there's a lot more work in construction. Uh, this is a great field. It's a growing field. Um, I don't know about the rest of the panel, but when the rest of the country and the rest of this area was in a recession, we were getting 20% growth every year due to construction. When I was your age, um, I guess I'd describe myself as being a, a dreamer. And I was always the kid in the back, and I was always uh, with a sketch pad of paper, and I was always drawing, constantly drawing, everywhere I went. I took uh, my pad of paper with me and I was drawing everything from uh, just portraits of people to uh, trees and, and buildings. And um, uh, I was at an event similar to this when an architect saw what I was doing and said, you know, I think you have some 
potential there and, and maybe you should think about becoming an architect. And we were down to our last dollars. It was either the point that we were going to invest our money into this buy and sell and I felt that in my heart no matter what I do when I put my mind and my heart to it I can make it work. As we went ahead and took our last money and we decided to open up a construction company. We went and, be, and based on the reason why I told you first that we had decided to open up a buy and sell, because what that did for me in my life, we did not open that buy and sell, but what it did was teach me that we can do whatever we want to do. Because I was already there and we were ready to open it, okay? And what it did was it made me not fear the obstacles I did not know about. I had already came that far in opening the buy and sell, so it was just a matter now of me finding out the information in order to open up my construction company. And that's what I did. I went down there, I got the paperwork, I looked into it, I said, you know what, we can do this. And we did do it. After McKinley, I went straight into the union, and I did 15 years in the union. And uh, in 2006, I took my master's license and I became the first and only African American female master plumber in New York State and the second in the country. And so uh, with that, we just continue to go on and get jobs and do work. I do a lot of work with BMHA, I do a lot of residential. I mean, you see this whole panel, I mean, everybody's worked hard, everybody has their own stories, but it truly does take a lot of hard work. You just don't get there overnight and it's years of hard work, so it doesn't stop. You know, after you graduate here, you graduate high school. I mean, I've been working hard for 15 years since I've been in your position. So, I mean, it does pay off. I mean, I've got, I own a home in North Buffalo. I just got married. I mean, I got a beautiful wife. And, you know, it's, you know, it, pay, it pays off. I mean, just to be able to know that all your hard work uh, truly pays off. And I'm doing it all in Buffalo. When people say that it's not going to happen, you, they're not retaining the young people. I mean, I'm here and I want to make a difference. So just work hard and you can be the next leader in this area. So, The things that you do in life today, if you see trouble, walk away from it. I mean, I've walked away from a lot of things, a lot of things. And, I, and I, it's, not, it's not a chump to do that, you know. But you guys are growing up in a tough time today where it's all kind of obstacles and trouble at every corner. Ladies, guys, and you gotta walk away from it, learn how to walk away from it. Don't think that you can't do this because of your zip code or your color or your gender. Um, we really are just regular people who uh, we, we seeked out opportunities and went at them like a rabid dog. Hey Buffalo, this is Tracy Cardwell from LP Seminelli, and I want you to join me on Saturday, August 25th at LaSalle Park for this year's Buffalo Funk Fest featuring Lakeside and some of Buffalo's best local bands. LP Seminelli is a proud sponsor of the Buffalo Funk Fest, and I'm equally proud to be hosting again. So come ready to party hard as we pay homage to the life and legacy of Buffalo's own Rick James. That's Saturday, August 25th at LaSalle Park. Hope to see you there. All right, Andrew, we are at School 61 on Leroy Avenue, right. right? Early Childhood Center, this is exciting. We were here the last time in January, and there was so much going on, but even when I came in, I can see major transformation that, that went on here since then. Yes, we have, we have a lot going on, especially on the outside. Uh, we'll see it a little later. We got additions going on. Um, some new ramps, for mm -hmm. access for the elevator, new stairwells for the main entrance. It's a, there's a lot, a lot to see on the outside, a lot to see on the inside. Oh so. yeah, well we're right now in the classroom and these mm -hmm. windows are beautiful. Yes they are, that's one of the things you can actually see from inside and out. Yeah. Um, the previous windows, I don't know if you remember, but all the top panning, the sashes, was, there was uh, metal pan, so you didn't get any light coming in from the top. Okay. We provided new windows throughout the whole building. So now you have double the light coming in. That is awesome. Right now we're downstairs in the ground floor. Okay. Um, behind us is going to be the computer lab. Mm -hmm. um, right where we are right now is another classroom. And this is the original building. So right above us, we can see the tin ceiling that okay. gets repainted and gets highlighted 
as um, pretty much just almost like a landmark or a nice architectural feature that we enhanced at the closing of the building. All right, all right. I can see there's a lot of workers here. So. <laughs> A lot of work going on here. That scared me. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of stuff going on here. Mm -hmm. What's happening right up here with this with this gentleman here? What's he doing? What Charles, are you doing up there? Charles is actually with DV Brown, um, uh, and he's doing. There's a, a slap sink upstairs, correct? Okay. All right. So he's putting in the water lines for upstairs, coming through the ceiling, dropping down. Obviously, you have to be delicate coming through the tin ceiling. Right. Um, uh, and all the water lines coming down. Uh, do you, you want to talk to yeah, Charles? Yeah, Charles, you got a second? You want to chat? First off, let me say you, what you're doing is great work. Have you worked on any other schools project? Uh, yeah, I've been in different schools around the city. Okay, very nice, very nice. And how long have you been a plumber? Uh, fourth year, fourth year apprentice. Fourth year actually. apprentice? Yeah. All right, One more year and you're a journeyman, right? Well, I'm going into my fourth year. Okay. Okay. Two more years. Two more years. <laughs> all right. And, and how do you like it? Is it good? Not bad at all. Not all right. Bad. Can you do me a big favor? Sure. For students that are watching this in the community, and if they have an interest in going into plumbing, what words of wisdom or you know advice you would offer them to kind of encourage them? Well, pretty much uh, stick to it. It seemed like a long time, five year apprenticeship, but right. it goes by quick. And it's worth it. It's worth it. Learning any trade is worth it. Right. The money's good, right? Money's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're obviously outside, and I see there's a lot of stuff going on. There's mm -hmm. some concrete work going on. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Mr. Eric back here, you know, working hard. What's happening? What's happening? This is Andrew? the front. This is the front of the school. Okay. And uh, right behind, right in front of us, we have the ramp going to the, the elevator. Right. And then behind us is a new stair going to the main entrance. Okay. So All right. I mean, it, it, greenery will have trees out here. It's going to look a lot different. Right. A lot better. You know, obviously trying to always improve. For our, for our students in the community that you know perhaps may be watching this, can you give them any words of wisdom about you know being a laborer? joining the trades, how important it is? Well, uh, the, the most important thing is just being out there trying to do something for yourself. Right. Uh, and then after that, you know, the trades, uh, it's, it's a great way to earn a living. Mm -hmm. You learn something, you know, hands-on. Right. And it's, it's just a great opportunity for the people of the community just to try to, you know, improve themselves. I and, agree. And they I can't agree. take that away from once you learn that skill, no one can take it away from you. Yeah, definitely. You're, definitely. Once you, you could you could work in the schools, you could take it somewhere yeah, else and right, right, you could definitely. work on your house. That's right, right. You right. do your stuff yourself. That's yeah. Right. So. That's right. Skilled for life. Mm -hmm. Right, definitely. Skilled for life. Mm -hmm. Well you know what? Thank you so much for your hard work here, you know, and your dedication. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I know Simonelli does. I definitely know that Sandra Rice at SLR appreciates it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So keep up the good work. Okay. Thank okay? you. Yep. Thanks a lot. All right, take care. Take Thanks. care. All right, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to welcome all of you. Welcome the classes of 1971 and 1975. Woo! All the way to 79. Thank you, Ken and Loretta. You know, this is going to be a great event today. I know everyone here will really enjoy what you see. I want to introduce you to our project manager, Mr. Ron Giuliano. And Ron is going to be the official tour guide because he was the person that oversaw all of the construction that happened in this school. So he can get detailed with you. I know, I know. I don't keep well. Just want to give you a look at a typical classroom. Um, we, we kept the plaster walls as much as we could. Um, refinished doors, like you're just like right behind you. Refinished the windows as much as we can. Like I said earlier, we're trying to maintain the same look, the same feel, the same building, uh, but you know, upgrade everything a little bit. So you see the interactive whiteboard behind this gentleman right here. Um, help the teachers. It's you know very new technology. The, all the new computers, the computer desks. Along with all this new great stuff, this building had beautiful woodwork in there. Like right in this corner, it's I mean you 
I want to say over 30 or 40 of those wardrobe units throughout this entire building. Uh, we kept pretty much 100% of them. So that's the perfect balance of the new stuff that you need for the teachers to do their job along with the old gems that you find in buildings like this. Just want to show you guys the, the new main office. It's completely changed. We have a brand new storefront system in the front here. So it's a lot easier for the people working inside to see what's going on outside. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you guys is right below you. Uh, the terrazzo floor is another one of those things that's original to this building back in 1934. It's another one of those things that you, they just, you don't see new buildings with these kinds of floors in there. There's that same compass right in the center back there. So what do you guys think about the auditorium? You like it? This is the perfect example of what paint and a little bit of work can do to a room. This, all this detail you see above you on all the walls, that all was there. It's just nobody saw it. It's, it was all the same color, so there's no depth. There's, you couldn't, nothing stood out at all. So literally this room is some carpet, um, the seats you're sitting on, the seats are new, but everything else, well, and, the, and the metal on the sides, those are new, but all the, the rest of the woodwork, everything else, that is existing wood. They just just brought it back to life, you know, sanded it down, refinish it. Awesome. That's our new addition. It's uh, about 2,400 square feet. The big red cube that you look at, that's going to be a new uh, a music, a chorus classroom with all the acoustics in there. You saw the sliding glass doors, uh, all that's very new stuff. Right behind you is a big circular piece of concrete. That's the idea for a teacher to come out here and teach a classroom to sit on these berms, these little mounds, and that red wall will act as a teaching wall to keep the kids' interest. You guys like the gym? Yeah. So you guys have all uh, you commented. You know the colors have changed a little bit. They added red instead of the green. So you see all the red everywhere. Um, the big changes are the floor. Obviously the the huge owl, the Olmsted owls in the in center court. We have the new volume all equipment, all new backboards, the glass backboards now, and the, the big things are on the walls on either side of us. They have brand new windows in the walls, and so that up there is going to be the weight room. So when the, when the kids are working out, they can look down on the gym class. And on the other side is the gym teacher's office. So he has his own you know office up there overlooking the gymnasium. So that was the biggest piece of work down here, and the floor. Like I said, this is the floor turned out beautiful. Hi, okay, I'm standing here with Miss Loretta Talbert Hicks, and she is the coordinator for this wonderful event that just happened here uh, at Olmsted at Kensington. You are, what position are you with the um, Kensington High School reunion? I am the chairperson, okay. and I've put everything together, and we've brought many people from all different states. Uh, a lot of people who are very, very happy to see our school again, and the renovations are absolutely beautiful, Tracy. Oh, we're so glad that you are here. This was a wonderful tour. And like I said before, everybody that's here from the classes of 1971 to 75, mm -hmm. we're just happy to have them. And I loved how they reminisced yes. walking down the hallway, seeing the different classrooms, yes. you know, pointing out Locker 13. Yes. <laughs> The famous Locker 13. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to congratulate you on your 40 plus year reunion right. and welcome to Olmsted at Kensington. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, we'll be back. Take this opportunity to welcome you all here this evening to the 70s reunion of the graduates of Kensington High School. I'm here for a specific reason to read a proclamation and present an award to a lady that really deserves an award. A company that helped this event. L.P. Simonelli, thank you for your effort, for hiring Tracy Starwell, and for doing the things that are necessary to put the infrastructure back together in Buffalo. It's a reason why this is being done. The 
Kensington High School class of 1972 seeks to highlight the legacy and ongoing influence of Tracy Cardwell from L.P. Seminary, as well as celebrate with the classes of 1971 and 1975. And whereas a great city is only as great as those individuals who give exemplary service to citizens whether through education, participating in voluntary programs, unique personal achievement, in their professional or lifetime endeavors, or simply through a vision, a vision that leads to a lifetime of citizenship and peace. Thank you, Loretta, for believing in me, for you know, just knowing what my vision is and, and honoring me. Thank you. My LP Simonelli co-workers, thank you. I love you all. Ron, you know, it's, it takes a team. You know, it takes a team. It takes a village. They're my team. They're my village. Surely I couldn't do this by myself. You know, I, I, there's no way. Um, so without them, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know. I love you guys. I love you all. They are my passion. If any way that I can um, mentor, um, encourage, love a child, direct them on a path that they may not be aware of, whether that's in construction management, architectural, um, plumbing, anything. If I can help that person, that, that child, I want to be there. I want to do that. And I do that through the programs, through LP Seminelli. You know, I'm, I'm privileged that they allow me to do this. And I love it. It's not that I have to do it. It's not a job. It's not a job, it's a passion. So thank you again, Loretta and Isaac, for honoring me. I'm truly humbled, I really am, because I, I love it, I love what I do. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for tuning in. Special thanks to all of my guests. Don't forget, we are on YouTube. Go to YouTube, type in LP Simonelli's Making It Happen. There you'll be able to view all of our past and current shows. All of my Facebook friends, don't forget to check our page, LP Simonelli's Making It Happen, on Facebook. You'll be able to view and, and find out any information or opportunities that are coming up for our minority and women business enterprises, along with any type of programs for for our Buffalo Public School students. All of questions, comments, suggestions, don't forget to call our hotline. You know the number, it's right there, give us a call. Thanks so much for tuning in and until next time, let's keep making it happen.